awesome God, almighty God, I give you praise, awesome God, you are highly lifted up, awesome God, you are highly lifted up. Almighty God, hey, my special, special, special love and healing ministry tribe. I hope everyone is doing well. I am doing so well spiritually. The body is still adjusting, but oh my goodness, it was a wonderful three days in the storm. I mean, like some say it was horrible, but for me, it was wonderful. I've grown so much in the past three days. Okay, so. Thank you, Father. You are such an awesome and amazing God. Thank you, Jesus, for being with me in that boat. Oh, what would I have done without you? Hey, yeah. Uh, our evening devotion is taken from Acts chapter 8, verse 37. And guess what? I just checked in the Bible I had on my Kindle. There was no Acts chapter 8, verse 37. I was like, how come? So I took my other Bible and I saw Acts chapter 8, verse 37. Wow. Hmm. So you need to be careful about what version you are reading. Oh, confirm it. Okay. So if you believe with all your heart, you may. Let me read from this Bible because um, um, it's more complete here. It was Philip and the eunuch, right? And he had taught the eunuch and they had been going along. And the eunuch was like, well, there's water. So why can't I be baptized? And so Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That was the belief. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let's not be beating around the bush. And if Jesus Christ is the Son of God, it means that we have to treat him with the same reverence we treat God. Oh, yes, because that even all one trinity. Okay. Oh. These words might address your concerns, devout reader, devout viewer, concerning the ordinances. You might say, I would be afraid to be baptized. It is such a solemn thing to declare myself to be dead with Christ and buried with him. When you baptize a baby, the baby does not know all of these things. But as an adult, I've experienced it as an adult. It was something else for me altogether. Okay. Oh, my God. I will not feel at liberty to come to the master's table. I will be afraid of eating and drinking judgment unto myself. Not discerning the Lord's body. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. Poor trembling one. Jesus has given you liberty. Do not be afraid. If a stranger came to your house, he will stand at the door or wait in the hall. He will not dream of intruding on his own throughout your house, for he is not at his home. Your child, though, makes himself very free around the house. And so it is with the child of God. Frankly speaking, the child of a president doesn't care whether their father or mother is a president. All their own is that my father. So, my house. You see them running around. That, that's the queen and her children, her grandchildren. They were not treating her like the queen. Well, maybe publicly, but privately it was grandma, it was mama, and all of those kind of things. But we got public or private, and my papa. <laughs> okay, oh. A stranger should not intrude where a child may freely go. Oh. When the Holy Spirit has allowed you to know the spirit of adoption, you can come to Christian ordinances without fear. Mm -hmm. The same rule is true of the Christians' inward privileges. You think, poor seeker, that you are not allowed to rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory? You are. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. If you are permitted to enter through Christ's door, or just to sit at the foot of his table, you will be content. But you will have no fewer privileges than the very greatest who are those anyway. God makes no difference in his love for his children. Hear it well, oh. A child is a child to him. He will not make him a hired servant, but he will feast upon the fatted calf. So when we say servant of God, it's just like that's the title, what you're doing on this earth. But before God, we are all his children. And yes, when we go and we come back, he that fat calf. He will have the music and the dancing the same as if he had never gone astray. Oh my goodness. Luke chapter 15, verse 22 to 25. 
when Jesus comes into the heart, he issues a general license to be glad in the Lord. No shackles are worn in the court of King Jesus. Our admission into full privileges might be gradual, but it is sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are saying, I wish I could enjoy the promises and walk at liberty in my Lord's commands. If you believe with all your heart, you may lose the chains of, of your neck, O captive one, for Jesus makes you free. Amen. A whom the Son of God has set free is free indeed. A sister sent this song with me and I want to wrap this up. Right? This is the last evening devotion for this week. I love the way you father me. I love the way you father me. Oh my goodness. I love the way you father me. Oh, I love the way you father me. Next time I'm going to uh, mix the song or do something about it. But for now, that's all that can really come to my mind. Have a wonderful um, evening. It's evening time for me. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All I want to say is thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.